Hello, everyone. This is Mary Gregory with MAS Coding Solutions. I hope you all are doing well. I am going to be talking today about PCS coding. Uh, July the 23rd and July the 24th, we will be having our PCS boot camp. Uh, this boot camp is designed to help you to understand what PCS is. Uh, we will be reviewing rules and guidelines. And you know, the most exciting thing is we're going to be doing quite a few of case, um, just not case scenarios. We're going to do some of that as well, but we're also going to be looking at real operative notes. Um, so let's talk a little bit about PCS coding. If you're not familiar with PCS coding, it is the procedural code book that we use for inpatient procedures. Uh, we were, we use that to, uh, for in, like I said, for inpatient procedures. We have to, it is, um, it's part of the ICD-10 data set. And I, inpatient procedure codes have to be coded with PCS. Our outpatient procedure codes, of course, has to be coded with CPT. You may work in a facility or you may get a job in a facility where they will do both on outpatient. They may code the PCS code as well as the CPT code. That is a facility decision. Um, PCS codes are not to be submitted on outpatient claims. Now, that doesn't mean it doesn't happen, okay? Uh, we have insurance comp some insurance companies that want PCS on the outpatient claim. Um, you, um, one facility I worked at uh, that I can uh, currently do some work for on a PRN basis, what they decided was that we would no longer put PCS codes on an outpatient claim if a insurance company wanted PCS codes on an outpatient claim, then we would handle those individually. But PCS code must be on inpatient claims for procedural coding. A lot of the PCS code will also um, drive where it is appropriate uh, MSDRG payment. So it's very important that we get PCS, get our procedure coding correct. PCS is a totally different animal from CPT. And the two are not married. They are not best friends. Uh, they don't live in the same neighborhood. Okay. Um, they both have their roles, uh, but they are not married. Before we went to ICD-10 and we had um, ICD-9 procedure coding system, the crosswalk between PCS and uh, CPT was very easy. Um, they were very, comp uh, they could be very compatible. That's not true with PCS coding. PCS coding uh, rules are different uh, from um, uh, um, CPT, for instance, when we were under um, ICD-9, and I want to make sure I said this correctly, if you had a biopsy performed and then you remove that full, you did, you remove the entire lesion, let's say, you didn't code the biopsy, you just code the removal. Well, in PCS, you code both. I, CPT still have that rule that if you take a biopsy of a lesion and you go back and remove the entire lesion in that same body system, same section, you only code the excision. And so we have, if, you, if you're going to crosswalk PCS with CPT, you have to follow, you got to remember that the rules and the guidelines are different. So what about PCS? With PCS to me is a very cumbersome system. 
That's just my own personal opinion, okay? There are people that love PCS. Some, some days I love it. I'm, I'm sort of schizophrenic with PCS. Some days I love it, some days I hate it, depending on what I'm having to cope. I'm just being honest with you. Um, so it, it's a, regardless to me, it's cumbersome. And I guess maybe because I was used to um, nine, we had a fixed code. And when I went to training, the one thing they told us about PCS is that PCS, we are building a code. Uh, P, with PCS coding, you are almost on a journey <laughs> to find the right code. But it's not difficult. A cholecystectomy and PCS is one code. It's just one code. So once that's done without a cholangiogram, okay, let me clarify that. So, you know, I can code a cholecystectomy and PCS real easy. Now, some of the other things, some of the other orthopedic things are pretty easy too. A hip replacement is easy. Uh, the code in PCS. Uh, to me, some of the heart procedures, I'm going to have to think about a little, little more. Um, and, and so PCS, it's a journey to you building a code. And you might say, well, Mary, what do you mean by journey? Well, uh, the journey is I'm going to look at the procedure. And one of the things that they tell us in PCS coding is this. You always have to determine what is the procedure designed to do. What is that procedure trying to do? And uh, so when someone have a cholecystectomy, for instance, that procedure is designed, if you do a total cholecystectomy, because you can't do a partial, that procedure is designed to remove the gallbladder. See, that's what it's designed to do. When I went to training and we had to do a, a cataract extraction, we thought, well, we would do an excision or you would do a resection because you've taken this cataract off the person's eye. Well, what that procedure is designed to do is to remove the lens from the eye and to replace the lens of the eye. So the proper procedure code is replacement. So you always have to look and say, what is this procedure designed to do? Now, I wrote a couple of notes now. If you're working with an encoder system, get to know your encoder. Get to know it. Um, how, how PCS work with the encoder. Now, I'm probably not going to be a, a software best friend when I say this. But I have a book. I have a PCS book. It's easier for me sometimes to go to my book and to build my code and then put it in the system than dealing with the system. It's just easier. Uh, if I, like I know a cholecystectomy is a resection. Well, my encoder asked me 50,000 questions about it to me. So you know what I do? I go to the table, I go to the hepatobiliary table, I find gallbladder, because remember, uh, if you don't know PCS, PCS is seven characters. You always have to have seven. In the medical surgical section, those characters are pretty much set in stone and they're going to mean the same thing. So when I see zero in the front of my my code, my PCS code, I know I'm in medical surgical. The, the next character will indicate what body system I'm in. That third character will represent what is the root operation that I'm trying to do. My fourth character represent the body part that I'm working on. The fifth character represent how did I get to where I needed to go to remove the gallbladder? I can, my physician can do an exploratory lap. He can make an incision, go down, remove the, and we call that an open colon cystectomy. Or 
my, my physician can do a laparoscopic cholecystectomy. And so I, I have an approach code for that. My sixth code say, did you use a device or did you mostly really mean did you leave a device in? My seventh character is what they call a qualifier. And there may be times I need to qualify the procedure with additional information about that procedure. And so we'll be learning all that uh, in this PCS uh, bootcamp. And so it's just easier for me to go to my hepatobiliary table, go to gallbladder, go to percutaneous endoscopy, because that's what they call a laparoscopic, and just code it. Then to go through all the steps that's in the system, especially when I know I have X amount of codes, uh, X amount of charts I got to do a day. That's just one way to help you to get through uh, and meet productivity and provide quality coding. The other thing you have to know is your diagnosis sometimes can help you to know where you, where you need to begin. Now, everybody come up with how they like to um, code. I have a process that I use. Everybody have a process. Sometimes with my PCS, my process is I look at my procedure code. I look at somebody that have an open reduction with an internal fixation device. And, and my, my head say, what is this designed to do? Or I have a fracture. So if, I have my, if my diagnosis is a fracture, I am going to look to see what did they do for that fracture? Did they reduce the fracture manually, meaning they just pushed it back in place? Did they uh, do a closed reduction, meaning that once again, they reduced it with, you know, without making an incision? Did they put a pin in? Did they do a ORIF? So once I see my diagnosis, and sometimes they don't do anything for the fracture, just depending on you know where the fracture is. Did they put a splint on? Because see, if they put a splint on, now I know my, my root operation uh, might be immobilization or something like that, because they're trying to immobilize it. They, they want it to stay in place. And so sometimes your diagnosis can help you to say, okay, I got an ORIF, I know I'm gonna have to deal with a, a reposition. And see, in our heads, especially if you coded with nine, you see the word ORIF, you know it's open. So when you go to um, your um, lower bones, upper bones, wherever you're reducing, um, you're gonna have uh, an approach for open. But see, hmm, you may not have an approach for close. So now I'm gonna have to think about this a little bit. And in fact, I probably should have turned to this. Um, I was going today, I'm gonna show you, um, see, I wanna share a screen with you today. Also to, um, let me see here, I want to do, hmm, uh, let's go over here, ICD-10, let's do share here. And I'm going to, I need to move that over, yeah, good. I, if you don't, if your uh, facility just have you, uh, just have an encoding book on your encoder and you really want to see how this book is laid out, you can always go to CMS, just type in CMS PCS. And it'll take you to the CMS site. And in the CMS site, you can find a copy of the tables and the index, like I pulled up here. Um, and uh, one of the things too, if you have a book or on your encoder system, ICD-10 PCS definition is part of the book. So your encoder have to have this. Now you may have to find out where it's at, but it's on your encoder. They also have to have for you the body part key. They have to have for you the device key, a substance key, and a device 
aggregation type. Those things have to be in the book. If you purchase a book, these things generally are put in the back of the books, the uh, definition, body key, device key, substance key, aggregation table, generally they're in the back of your book. So if you got an encoder system, uh, it should be somewhere in that encoder system where you can click on this. Body keys, device keys are constantly being uh, updated, especially device key, uh, because for 2022, we're gonna have some new device keys put in. Um, in that, um, uh, I want to say lower bones, upper bones, it's a type of uh, nail that they can put in now. Sustain keys, oh my gosh, we got so many PCS codes for systems, especially dealing with COVID-19. So I just want to show you this. See, I can, in this online table, I can click on ICD-10 and notice here, uh, if you can see it, uh, these are the sections in the PCS book. Now here they said tables, but really they represent sections as well. Zero always mean you in medical surgical. When you see a one in front of a code, you know you're dealing with some type of OB type procedure. And we'll talk about OB uh, in the um, in the boot camp in our uh, that's coming up placement, administration, and see word placement here. Placement is where I would put maybe a stent, excuse me, not a stent, the splint that I was talking about. So let's go to medical surgical. Now, uh, when you click on medical surgical, here is a list of all of the body system that have their own tables, okay? So if I want to do that gallbladder, see how I have hepatobiliary system? I can go there because that is part of the gallbladder. Now, in your diagnosis coding, you might have to find that in the gastrointestinal section. See, So kind of realize that your diagnosis code may be in the gastrointestinal section, but the gallbladder is in the hepatobiliary system when it comes to the PCS type. So if I wanted to do an ORIF, I can go here, see if I can get it to work. I did. And these are the root operations that's in uh, lower bones. Some of the body system have all of the root operations. Some of them do not. And they are constantly uh, finding out areas where they need to add something. Um, uh, it, uh, I think several years ago, they didn't have lymph nodes somewhere. Like if you could biopsy lymph nodes, I think it had to do with the bronchoscopies, uh, the respiratory system. I don't think they had lymph nodes or they didn't have a, uh, uh, they didn't have a, uh, an approach for bronchoscopies in that area. And so that was something that they was able to go back and fix. And that's the way it worked with PCS. That's why they love PCS, supposedly, is because you can, they can go back and they can add a table, they can change a table. Uh, it's easier to fix and update. So let's say I want to do uh, an RRIF. So I'm going to go to reposition. So I'm going to reposition. I think my system, okay, there we are. And so you can see this table. Now in the book, you may have three, uh, three pages on ORIS or reposition, just depend. So if you don't find it in one on page one, you need to go to another page to check. So this is, so see how at the top section, even if you pay attention to your, um, your encoding system, your encoder set up to look this way because they always have to tell you what section you're in. They always have to tell you what body system, and they always have to tell you the definition of the procedure you're getting ready to code. See, they want you and I, as a coder, to look up and look at that root operation and read it. Reposition, moving to its normal location or other suitable location, all of a body part or a portion of a body part. 
So they want me to look at this and say, okay, does my operative note support that I am moving this bone back into its original where it needs to be? Or am I moving something to a new location? Now, don't think um, of moving it to a other suitable location. I don't, the examples that we have, they're not talking about cutting off a body part and putting it somewhere else. That's not what they're talking about. They are talking about moving that body part in the location, maybe where it needs to be. So you can think about undescended testes. That, that's a, ma a male child that testes didn't come down. So they can go in and pull those testes down and that is called a, 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 a reposition. So don't get repositioned when they said move into its normal location or other suitable location. They're not talking about cutting the body part off and putting it somewhere else. That's not what they're talking about. They're just talking about so that body part is out of location for where it's at. And this just needs to be moved into the right location. And so you have to look at that and say, oh, am I, am I relocating? Am I moving something to its normal position because now it's out of position? Am I, am I moving it? Do I need to move it to a different location within that body area? So kind of think of it like that. So notice, uh, let me see here. So that's, that's your root operation. Those three things, as long as you're in medical surgical, will always represent the same thing. The section you're in, the body system you're in and your root operation. Your fourth uh, character will always represent what body part you're working on. And so we want to, I'm just gonna kind of make it simple. Um, let's do, uh, we want to do, uh, let's say we want to do, let's just do uh, upper femur right. And notice you got right, you got left. Now, if someone had a bilateral reposition, of course, you're going to have the codes twice. And the only thing going to change is the body part. So notice you got six for upper femur right. It was open. And then my device, it gave me all of my options over here. Internal fixation, external fixation, the medullary nail, uh, monopolar, the mono. Uh, planar, excuse me, I didn't see it as well, external fixation. And so you got all your fixation, or you may have no device. No device means that they didn't put a pin in, they didn't put a nail in. Maybe they just went in openly, reduced it and come out. I don't see that a lot, but it could happen. Over here, you don't have a qualifier. So these, th these four things tell you everything you need to know about the procedure. You don't need any additional information. So kind of think of it like that. So once again, I'm just giving you a brief overview of what we'll be talking about in this July 23rd and 24th PCS coding um, bootcamp. I am going to um, end that for today. Uh, let me see here, I'm gonna scroll down. Uh, like I said, now over here, you have uh, an additional uh, information. I just wanted to show you how that seventh uh, character could look. So once again, you may be doing a uh, ORIF on the right metal torso. It could be open. You put a device in, but they said, "Look, did you uh, did you work on that sesamoid bone in the first toe? See, you can just do a metal torso and then not be a sesamoid bone. Cause see down here how you have no qualifier." So if I have a patient that had an ORIF on that right metatarsal and it did not involve, involve the sesamoid bone, guess what? I'm going to use the Z for no qualifier. And always remember your PCS coding, you have to go straight across in a row. You cannot say, oh, I, I need that external. 
I need an external and I need an internal fixation device. See, that you, you can't do that. That doesn't work. So your role always have to go completely across. Well, this is Mary Gregory. I look forward to seeing you in our PCS coding bootcamp. Uh, we'll be doing a couple of these uh, periodically. I named this, this one number one, uh, just to kind of give you an idea of what we will be covering. All righty, I look forward to talking to you. Uh, don't forget to follow me on Facebook. And, and on my Be The Buzz page, uh, we I, I just love Be The Buzz. It's, I'm working on it. I'm going to get it to where I want it to be. And I want you all to be a part of it. Um, what, Instagram? We do Instagram now. I have someone to help me with Instagram. Uh, we doing Twitter. We doing LinkedIn. Uh, we try to, I'm even thinking about getting on some of the newer social media, Rumble, I think it is. So look, um, I want you to enjoy coding. You know, when you enjoy what you do, you do a better job at it. And look, grow yourself. Grow you in your coding. Don't, don't wait for your job to grow you. You grow you. You empower you. I don't, you know, we, we talking about how the industry is changing. But guess what? Let's, let's ride this wave as long as we can and let's change with it if we have to. This is a great profession and I, 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 will, I encourage you to stay with it. We need more inpatient coders. Don't be afraid of it. Just jump in with both feet, dog pedal, you know, whatever. Float till you, till you get there. Um, so anyway, I enjoyed meeting with you all today. And I hope that this video proved very helpful to you. I look forward to seeing you in July. Uh, so it'll be an online, it's gonna be remote, um, all day, eight to four, cost is 259 uh, per person. And we will, I think we'll be offering some type of discount. I don't really work with that part of it. My goal is to make you the best coder you can be. And always remember this, coders get paid to think.